are live. We are live, live again. Oh yeah, get on your mask, Mike. Sorry. <laughs> We're in close quarters during a pandemic. I know. I'm sorry. Did you watch the bait? I dropped my thing. Uh, you mean the fly? Yeah, the fly. Yes, of course. Like, I saw that's all I was gonna fly. talk about. You know, honestly, I was, like, trying to really watch the debate, and then the fly happened, and the whole thing kind of just went off the rails from there. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't think anybody remembers the debate. The internet seems to remember that there was a fly on Pence's head. <laughs> That's seriously all that anyone's been talking about, other than no one said anything in the debates, but... I mean... This I, isn't a politics podcast, but uh, it could be. <laughs> God, I don't want to make it a podcast like that. Um, I'm thinking about starting one with my brother, because he... Uh, Would you and him argue about stuff? Yeah, he doesn't agree with anything that I agree with. Oh, that'd be, um, that'd be hard to listen to, but... Well, we're somewhat civil, you know? I try to be like, well... I think that blah blah blah. Like yeah. instead of telling him why he's wrong, I'll tell him what I think instead. I uh yeah, I mean I like it when debates are actually debatable and I thought they did if I'll give them one thing, they did let each other speak for the most part. Yeah. Much and, more civil. Yeah, it was much more civil and that's good. It's a step in the right direction. Although I think Trump just tweeted that he won't do the next one because of we were set to omnidirectional. Uh oh, we screwed up. I just did. Let me. Can I have a tangent? Yeah. My uh, UX class I was taking, my final project was yesterday. Mm -hmm. And my project was to redesign a household item, like something that I think needs redesigned, like the UI of it. Okay. And I chose. This? This blue Pro Yeti microphone. Because the things on the back are because hard. Because. Like, understanding what each one of those exactly. is. Exactly. These symbols. Every time I come here, I have to look up what these symbols mean. I know. You're supposed to memorize the symbols right, you're supposed in to the memorize manual. It. <laughs> yeah. But the problem is we only do this once every two weeks. And that, like, I'm not going to remember what those symbols mean once every two weeks. Yeah, so there's one with two circles. Uh-huh. Um, is that, like, two, two people? See, there's one with two circles, and then there's one that's, like, a figure eight. Which is too similar, in my opinion. Yeah, and then the, the circle just means like every direction, right? Yeah, I believe that's omnidirectional. It's probably really loud. I'm like speaking right <laughs> into the yeah. mic. Uh, the heart-shaped one is cardioid, and that's the one that is in the front here. Okay. Actually, we probably should be doing stereo. Well, I think we've tried the two. Like, we tried stereo. Stereo is... Is that the two circles? It, stereo is like everything yeah. this way and this yeah. way. Well, we could try it. I don't yeah, really I care. think I should, but again, I'd have to look it up. Do you want to plug some headphones into it to monitor how it sounds? I don't remember which. Here. I think it's. I don't the... care. We're doing this live, and this is Hackport. This is how we figure stuff out. I think it's the figure eight pattern that's uh, stereo. Here, try these on. I just. I don't know if I. Oh, actually. You can monitor it. Yeah, you're right. That's what I like about these. That's why I want one of these. Even though they have bad UX, honestly, these things are awesome. Yeah. Okay. So what are we on right now? How does it sound? That was the other thing. This volume knob. Uh huh. It never ends. You can turn it to the right oh, forever, and, it, and turn it to the left forever. Is that just for monitoring though? Yeah, but it's confusing. All right. Okay. So which one are we on right now? <laughs> We're apparently an ASMR channel now. <laughs> I've got like I'm some, just... I've got some paper. We can. <laughs> yeah, you have a bag. Is anybody Ooh. even watching this show? It's actually. If someone is. Pretty good. Does it sound pretty crunchy? It sounds great. This might be our best uh, episode yet. <laughs> no one's on chat though. Josh, are you listening to this episode? <laughs> this sounds. Wow, I might, I might be on. Oh something. crap! Someone's on here. Who is this? He's on yet. Oh hey, <laughs> what do you think? It's good AM, ASMR content. 
That's a whole. So, do you think it's on the right one? I stereo? Think, I think it's stereo, yeah. This is the one we want. Huh. Learn something every day. You know so, what? anyway, yeah, I, uh, uh, I did a presentation on it, and it was pretty good. I, I had uh, my roommate, Joe Dibble, test it for me. It's, my prototype was adding a light bar on top of the microphone mm -hmm. so that when you selected a, a setting, a light bar would indicate where the microphone where was picking up. Yes. Oh, that's a really good idea. That, it, this just had like a ring of LEDs. Yeah. And it's like, oh, this is where I'm picking up the... Yeah. Don't tell them that. Well, <laughs> I, w I will, and then they'll hire me for... <laughs> Well, they won't. They'll, they'll just, just steal, steal it. my idea. Yeah, I mean that's way more American. But anyway, that was my concept. It didn't really. I thought that just by having that, it would be enough, but um, it might not be enough. You might still need to know, kind of what. Anyway, I can give you my whole presentation if you want, but I don't think this is the time or the place. I think this is. I think I actually thought that was kind of cool. That was a good segue, Mike. Oh. I was just ranting about our president saying he wouldn't do another uh, debate, so <laughs> I don't really. <laughs> um, I don't need this anymore. No, you don't. Although it sounded really good. Um, so yeah, uh, what's happened in the last? I mean, we we did a lot of tech stuff the last chat. Um, still feel like it's kind of Techtober, Tech November, Tech Denver. There's so much stuff coming out. So like, I don't know if you saw today, AMD. It was one of the articles they had, but AMD announced Ryzen, the new Ryzen stuff. Oh, they did? They announced another kind of thing about Big Navi, which is like their, you know, the RTX competitor. Um, so it's like crazy. I mean, this stuff's just blowing out. In fact, I have a, let's see here. Um, here's the Big Navi announcement they made today. Big Navi benchmark blazing past 4K, 60 frames per second. I mean, I feel like all the new like cards can do this, but I what I'm curious about is the new processors got announced like Zen three. I'm just really curious if like the, what the price point's going to be on this. Yeah, because they're like gunning for the thirty eighty with this thing, mm -hmm. and if it's like a couple hundred dollars cheaper, I mean they're they're touting like huge performance gains. It'd be interesting to see. Yeah, it's got to be cheaper, right? It but, has to be. But I don't the know thirty. Wait, the 3090? They're gunning for the 3090? The 3080. I don't think oh. they're gunning for the 3090. They yeah. might have a SKU that's for that, but... Well, the 3080 is uh, so reasonably priced for an NVIDIA. They probably did that, like, to, to yeah. make it so AMD couldn't... Maybe. But, I mean, the, the, 1080, the 1080 was the same price as the 3080 when it came out. Really? Yeah, the 20 series cards were the ones that were just really weird. Really? Because they, like... I think they were too close in performance, so they like. I don't know what they. I don't know what they were thinking with those cards, because like it's the same price point. The, in fact, I think the twenty eighty, the normal twenty eighty full stop was the same price, six ninety nine or whatever. Because I paid seven hundred for my ten eighty, founder edition when it came out. Um, Maybe I'm just thinking of the price of these when bitcoin yeah well and they, yeah that's probably more of it because in the 20 series like it all got kind of murky and screwed up by bitcoin and avail and availability i feel like it's always been a problem with these yeah. cards so i don't know it's it's a mess it's a wash um so the other you know the big i think even bigger announcement is zen 3 um which is the new ryzen processors they're claiming that they will beat Intel's current processors at single-threaded performance, which is a lofty, lofty claim. Without mm -hmm. using more power, without doing, you know, and so um, benchmarks aren't out, but this is cool. I mean, the prices are here. I mean, their top-of-the-line one's really expensive. I mean, this is like, this is more kind of like what Intel does with their super crazy chips that aren't really desktop chips, you know, like... 16 cores, 32 threads. I don't think we really need that. But down here, this Ryzen 7, this is the stuff that's interesting to me, is 8 cores, 16 thread, you know, similar performance as the Intel. Um, yeah, I mean, competition's good. And if this is what they say, you know, 100 watt TDP, 65 watt, that's like crazy. 
Intel's way higher than that on their chips. Yeah. They're hotter. Um, so, I don't know. It'll be really, really cool to see what uh, what comes from this. And I'm excited to see benchmarks. I mean, if they start crushing Intel at, like, single-threaded performance, that's going to be crazy. It would probably make Intel lower their prices, maybe. Which would be interesting. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, let's hope they do that. Cause <laughs> I want to buy a PC soon. You want to just upgrade your your, yeah. C, your. yeah, I'm being bottlenecked. Well, I still haven't fixed my uh, <laughs> issue I don't need to be meaning to. Oh, like your your SSD. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably. No, my uh, um, my memory. Oh yeah, that that's gonna help. Yeah, I need to do that. But like, just playing like Warzone or something. Like my FPS is all over the place. Yeah. And I, even if I lower the settings or not, like something's up. You did get a new cooler though. That's, that's yeah. Pretty big. That was good. Um. It's no longer leaking in my computer anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That old one was comical. Um, yeah, no, I mean... Maybe I'll just get a PS5. Yeah, you could do that. You just stop playing PC games. Yep, just do PC games. I'm... need a new mouse now, because mine freaking... Is that your Logitech mouse? Yeah. Oh, that's a bummer. Yeah, you can't hold down a click consistently. So, so if, if you, I try like, to like... I try to, like, move drag, it. Yeah. It's just not, not doing that, If huh? I start clicking and dragging, like, on a desktop, it'll, like... Have you tried to see if you can, like, clean it, if, like, the switch got dirty or something? No. Hmm. Of course not. I'm well, just assuming it's broken. Yeah. I'm could gonna just return be... it like a normal person. Or you could just, like, fix it. You know, but... I wouldn't know how. Okay. Um, no one's got the time for that. I, uh... Let's see here. Oh, I, uh, I've been playing uh, Star Wars Squadron. Have you in been playing VR? Yeah, in VR, and it's been freaking awesome. No, um, I haven't complained. I haven't. It's really good. Like every, and it's so funny because there's all these like articles coming out, and people are just kind of like freaking out about it, which I kind of get because it's good. It's really good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's simple. It's not. Like, I think it's good because it's not like they didn't. It's not over the top. It's they focus on what matters, like the flight control, like flying. In an X-Wing or in a, you know, it's like, that stuff is done really well. And the multiplayer, I haven't done, the only multiplayer I heard that's worth doing is the fleet battles. I heard the other stuff's pretty meh. Yeah. But the campaign's good enough. Like, I, I, I've just been playing campaign right now. And I'm like, all right, yeah, this, some of this is kind of cheesy. But it's like, when it comes down to it, I'm in an X-Wing or I'm in a TIE fighter. And I'm like flying through space. In it, and I'm fighting in like a Star Wars space battle. That sounds pretty cool. And in VR, it's like I'm literally in VR. I'm like in my cockpit, <laughs> looking around. Like you'll be like a Tie Fighter will fly back past you, and I'll like look over my shoulder to see what ink vector he's on, so I can be like uh, uh, flip around and get that guy. And like being able to actually look around with your head is actually an advantage. Like. I think you have an advantage over someone who doesn't have VR, like in mm -hmm. multiplayer for sure. Um, wow. Yeah, and if you're hardcore, you can turn off the HUD completely, so you have to use the HUD in the cockpit. Oh, you gotta do that. Uh, I don't know, it'd be pretty tough, but you, you could definitely do it if you're really, if I you're loved, a purist. <laughs> I loved it. the conversation you were having with Steve. <laughs> This one feels like a small child is strangling my foot the entire time. <laughs> he just posted a photo of the <laughs> Oh yeah, I kind of like made up, I made up some like PC gaming box that was powered by kyber crystals. Yeah. And then I like, and then when he asked, no, I sent the, I sent the photo of like the, tr the Jedi training shield that doesn't have, <laughs> he's like, what, well, VR headset. Steam is so mad. <laughs> that was a good I mean, one. I was having fun. Yeah, I laughed twice. Yeah, I mean, 
you can just see, I mean, in this photo, Mike, I mean, you can just kind of see, just imagine being in a VR headset and you're like going through warp and you can literally like look around your whole cockpit. They even have like little charms and stuff you can get, little cosmetics, like, <laughs> and it's just like, ah, uh, awesome. yeah, it's really good. Like, I've, I've been impressed. I highly recommend it, especially if you have VR, like it's, yeah, they, they knocked it out of the park. Yeah, and this is like the mission room where you do your missions and you have to like go in and chat with people. In VR, you're just kind of like on the bridge of the ship. Like, I mean, I don't know, man. If you're into Star Wars, I mean, for me, it was like the first second I started flying, I was like, oh, wow, it's like all my childhood dreams. I'm literally flying an X-Wing right now. Like, That's awesome. Yeah. So, And the controls are like, I've been using the Xbox controller. I think a joystick would be ideal. Can you use that with VR? Uh, the Xbox or the joystick? Joystick? Yeah, you can. So, I mean, the one thing they did, and I think that's why people are really touting it, like, this this review from Kotaku was really good. Like, and I read another one, too, just talking about how the game's not a really big game. It's not even, they don't even, they're not even charging you. I think it's, like, 40 bucks. But they nailed how they executed. It supports almost every VR headset out there. It It's just, it's cross-platform it's good enough, right? And, like, I think if that's a way better strategy, instead of trying to make these giant games that cost tons of money and then people end up hating, you know? And, like, I think because they kept it simple and really just focused on what mattered, like, this game's going to be around, you know? People are enjoying playing it, you know? And Yeah. So, yeah. Are they going to add on to it? They said they're not, yeah. um, but I think they just, they did it right, you know? Like, I think it's just, it's big enough multiplayer is there if you want to keep playing like but you know even the campaign like i think if i finish just the campaign i'll be like yeah that was sweet totally satisfied you know for 40 bucks you know and yeah we'll see well you know if it's really popular maybe they'll just make a sequel you know i mean yeah um you know and it's it, yeah as far as controls go you can pretty much map anything you know they've they've added tons of support and um yeah it's it's cool Thumbs up. Maybe we can even throw it. We can throw it on, like when we're done here or something. If you want to try it, maybe. Um. Have time. <laughs> uh, oh, this was another article I found uh, before that cracked me up. It was called. Uh, I feel like an asshole when I ask my Google Assistant to tighten my Nike lace laces. Oh my god! And so Google recently like announced like they just expanded their API for what the assistant can do. And so like this this uh, person on Gizmodo wrote an article about how, and I think it's a video, yeah, about how you can like literally tell Google Assistant, "Hey Google, tighten my shoelaces," because he has Nike's self lacing shoes. And I just thought that was nerdy as all hell and. That's the world we're, world we're getting to, you know, and super nerdy. <laughs> I think he said some here. It said, uh, "In practice, I felt like grade A ass hat, not because of Google Assistant did anything wrong. The bit where I had to say, hey, Google, tighten my shoes with Nike Adapt.' <laughs> <laughs> but I think he figured out how to like make it work perfectly. I said the thing, my my Pixel XL opened Nike app, and lo and behold, my two my shoes tightened." But I think he figured out how to make it better. What did he say? You could say, like... Yeah. It, it was pretty funny. He was just talking about how he found out how to shorten it up. Oh, yeah, he can go, Hey, Google, lace up my sneakers. <laughs> or something. But, yeah. I don't know. It's just crazy that that's the world we're going to. I mean, I'm actually... I mean, shamelessly, I'm, like, super think these are the coolest shoes ever. But I'm not going to pay that exorbitant price for a pair of shoes that'll wear out. Yeah. No. But... I think it's going to get cheaper and cheaper, though. I think Nike's really working on that, so I'll be curious to see how soon it'll be until we can afford a, you know, some, you know, hundred hundred and fifty dollar pair of shoes that laces itself. Could happen. Nerdy is all get out. Super nerdy. Um, oh, Mike, you wanted to talk about Life Beyond. Should we just watch the teaser trailer? We could do that. Can we? Yeah. It's not copyrighted. I mean. What, are, what is he gonna do? Shut it down. We're watching the trailer. We'll see what happens. It's just the teaser. It's not the actual trailer.
different sequence of living things following its own pattern of evolution. So we uh, we had invited a Melody Sheep to come to Tree Fort. That didn't happen this year, but hopefully, and he ho- was coming. Yeah, um, hopefully he'll be down to come come next year, um, twenty twenty one. Fingers crossed. Um, you know, hopefully we just we, you know if the pandemic gets better, we'll be able to bring some more people from out of town and you know resume as normal. But I mean, his stuff is awesome. I mean, he was probably going to tease some of this at, at, you know. That would have been awesome. But really cool videos. Melody Sheep, look him up. I mean, he's made some great science videos. And his new stuff's really, like, about the universe and time and kind of everything we know. He's kind of pushing the idea. It's such a cool, like, I don't know of anything else like this. Like, really good visuals. And then they accompany... Like these are accompanied with like a full album that he releases. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's really cool. Man, yeah. I mean, he, I, his stuff's great. I mean, we're we're both total fanboys. I mean, his Carl Sagan video was like canon for us for a year. Or so. Yeah, it's it started I mean, from there. <laughs> he's come a long ways geez. for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to beat that though. Yeah. No, it's really really good. Yeah, well, that's all I really had for the news today. I mean, some, I mean hmm. Um, you know what's been on my mind lately? What's up? Social Dilemma. Oh, I haven't watched that. You haven't? I kind of don't have the time to watch popular shows on Netflix. <laughs> yeah, I only watch half of it. But I got the gist. I mean, it's nothing... New. Like is it yeah? Is it nothing we already don't know about the problems with social it's, media? Like it's, it's nothing ravaging we, our society. It's nothing we don't know, but it's the first time a lot of people have heard of it. Interesting. I um, mean, it, it's 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 becoming so obvious to me that our society's gotten to a point where social media just has created echo chambers that are so yeah they don't help anyone right. <laughs> So, <laughs> oh, that was a big chunk of chat. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, it's. It, it, it. I, re- I was. Um, remember when we had that article from Boise Weekly um, talked about Half Court? Mm-hmm. And the way it started out was like super dark. Yeah. <laughs> like, whoa, this is a weird way to introduce us, but. Yeah. I'm like, you know, I, I understand now. Like, like. Technology in certain areas might be ruining society. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, and, it, and it, I think it's fair, right? Like, I've always been one of those people, I'm an optimist, I believe technology can save yeah. humanity, right? But, like, we don't know what we don't know. And, like, I think the, in, the in far-reaching impact of the internet, we're just now really kind of seeing, oh, crap. Yeah. You know, and... I think I think one of the biggest problems is these bigger companies have you know they've they've very strictly created policy that is around hands off you know this is you know it is people's rights to post and like what they want but I'm like in the end the monster they built the algorithm they built yeah. rewards basically pumping up you know and so like I think you know Mark Zuckerberg I'll just say it like him saying you know we have no, you know, we, we are not going to influence in any way this election. I was like, that is crap. 
total fan. And, you know, they have to take a stand, in my opinion. Companies at this point that have influence over communication and how people communicate, I think it's insane for them to not actually take a stand politically. Like, I, I just don't think you, without shooting yourself in the foot long term, I just don't think you're, you know, I don't know. I think it'd be way smarter for the Silicon Valley companies just to say, uh, you know what, we are choosing a side. And, <laughs> but, you know, I don't know. But <laughs> that's just me. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the solution is. But these algorithms are so useful for good yeah. things. Yeah. But they're. I mean, for connecting for other people, things. it's like, you know, like I. You know, recently I started getting way back into playing paintball, you know, and like these communities online, it's amazing even just via Facebook how much that has grown where it's like, oh, I'm looking for this specific model and company of gun. Well, there's an entire community that just focuses on that, yeah. right? So I go on there like, hey, does anyone have, you know, and it's like you're, you're getting like not only subject matter experts, but you're getting passionate people that just care about that one thing, you know? And like, it's kind of yeah. funny, like forums, are, I'm still involved with PB Nation, which at one point was the largest forum in the world, in the world, and it's a paintball forum. Really? I didn't know that. I, like, I've recently learned all these stats on them, and it's still one of the largest, like, active forums in general. But it's an old school forum. It's so old school how it operates. But I love it because there's never any negativity on this forum <laughs> ever ever everyone like it's just like this yeah. positive space that i go to when i'm like and i need to just like take a break like whatever and like yeah it's it's so funny because that's like a positive side i can think of is that, like this old community but they don't have like likes and and you know upvotes and any of that right it's just yeah. like you make a post and people either read it or they don't and people have to click on your post and respond to it if they're in, you know interested <laughs> so yeah. it's like yeah there's no this. aggregation you know <laughs> i miss that old school stuff yeah like, part of the social dilemma documentary like interviews the guy that made the like button mm -hmm. he's just like i invented the like button like the worst thing at the end <laughs> like, did the guy at the end of the conversation the guy say he wanted to put a gun in his mouth like pretty much. yeah i mean likes and oh man i mean they've done counsel countless research on like the dopamine and like yeah getting those red dots those red notifications like yeah and that's you know they didn't even cover the misinformation aspect in the documentary it, it was just about their algorithms and their recommendations and their addictive nature, mm -hmm. um, which is totally true. Like, the part of that class I was taking too is like talked about how how you design for persuasion and, mm -hmm. and keep people busy and on it. And there are some companies that take that information to make a profit and hack people's brains into doing what they want and some that don't yeah but that information's out there any company can do it it's not illegal no i mean it's just kind of like how people were on you know i, I hate to say it but like the trump campaign's case because of the election and and social media and all this and the and the main guy who did all the social media is like i went to facebook and they sent employees to our campaign to help us He's like, and that's available to anyone. And like, we just did it. And the other campaign didn't. And they helped us optimize all of our stuff. And he's like, to, on their platform, you know, their experts helped us use their platform to disseminate, you know, information. Yeah. And it worked, you know, and it's like, geez, you know, like if it's politically, yeah, I don't even know the answer to that, but it's like, I, I can't, I can't knock them for not just winning you know and doing it right. <laughs> you know and, and the guy even said he's like yeah dude we they offered hillary's campaign the same people and they said no and they said we have it we have a social media team and like <laughs> i mean it's pretty crazy i think that same guy though just got left their camp left the trump administration for because he's on like suicide watch or something or like so anyways <laughs> oh. Oh, 
That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah. it's, it's interesting. So how do we, <laughs> how do we address this as a heckler? Do we? So, like, the social dilemma? I mean, it, Mike, you bring up a good point. Do we bring up the dark side of tech at all? Well, I mean, I'm always, a, I'm never opposed to, like, even having that be part of the conversation, right? I mean, if we had a panel around the social dilemma, that might be a great panel. I think we could get people from all sides to chime in on that, right? That'd I mean, be cool. the, you know, it's, it, we have to be very, technology <laughs> can be used in every way, right? I mean, good yeah. or bad. And it's important to talk about why it's good and why it's bad. And hopefully we can find solutions forward that make, you know, at its heart, you gotta, you gotta admit that like Facebook's original idea was just connecting people and you know creating communities online i it, loved their original oh it was so simple thing myspace even you know i mean yeah but you know i it's funny to me because i've really defaulted back to older communities that i are way more positive and way less negative in a lot of ways i mean you log into facebook and it's just like positive posts negative posts middle posts Ads, 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 ads. So it's just like, uh, you know, I don't know. Yeah, but it's a, it's a heck of a tool still. Yeah. No, I mean, we have to use it for hack for it. We have to use it if you're, a, you know, creating content. If you're a festival, you, you need to market through these platforms. Of, it's where it's all gone. Um, yeah. And maybe there's a better way forward. I don't know. But... <laughs> Did you, have you seen what Facebook's planning to do for moderation, like for um, having like a content moderation Supreme Court? Yeah, they're making like their own organization, right, that has people that... It's, hypo I mean, they say that it's separate from Facebook. Yeah. And they will be... Like yeah in charge and not even they can they can out like whatever they they can make mark zuckerberg do these things even and it's third party mm -hmm. um yeah i've, I've kind of heard of it i thought it was a pretty awesome solution because it's still moderation. something that was started by facebook so like in the end it's like you know i feel like if 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 they made a if, if like all of silicon valley got on board I think that's the idea. Like, Maybe they will. You know, I I just I feel like this type of thing needs government regulation in the end, but we'll, well see. Yeah. I mean, I oof, yeah, it's a crazy time, man. I <laughs> yeah, they're they're doing that. And what was the other thing they were? You made me think of another thing they were saying they were gonna do, but yeah make a cryptocurrency uh yeah that, that kind of bombed pretty hard didn't it <laughs> yeah um yeah that seemed like a pretty big power grab <laughs> oh yeah you know we can have a currency and then it's just everywhere and we don't have to pay tax on it because it's a crypt you know like i saw so many red flags when that happened facebook kind of backpedaled yeah. pretty fast so <laughs> yeah um yeah i mean i think like Oh, that's what I was going to say. So, like, you know, they're making this governing body that's going to, like, re you know, it's going to be, like, a court for... Deciding yeah. what, what gets taken down. And, and what doesn't. Yeah. Well, like, I think a lot of people don't even realize that flag stuff on Facebook and even other social media platforms, it's not an algorithm that's doing it for the most part. It's actual people. They are paying people to sit in a room... And they look at an image and they just decide whether or not it's explicit or not. And these people see, like, horrific stuff. And, like, yeah. they, they get paid pennies on the dollar. They live in India. They live in, you know, third world countries. And they're just getting paid for Facebook, which is nuts. That is nuts. And, you know, I know, like, I think the idea is eventually the algorithm will get to the point where they don't need people or as many people. But they have, like, hundreds. I think. Thousands of people. Like. I think there's. <laughs> Yeah, I think there is, like, the first layer is, like, the algorithm. Yeah. Like, it does stuff that, like, the AI that's yeah. very confident that they can see, like, detect what the image is or whatever. But, yeah, you're right. Like, if, if maybe the algorithm isn't confident that, and it needs some human 
touch to it. Mm-hmm. And yeah, there's there's apparently not even that many human people that do it. <laughs> Considering like, I remember I think I it was like a Verge podcast I listened to. They were like interviewing uh, moderators, ex moderators from Facebook. Yeah. And they had to, you know, they signed an NDA, so they're like not actually allowed to talk about it. Yeah. But yeah. There's a really good, there was a really good uh, podcast about that. Um, might have been Radio Lab. I can't remember, but it was pretty it was pretty eye opening. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's interesting. I mean, we live in this like everyone tries to thinks it's like this happy bubble that we see on Facebook, but that's only because it's like tirelessly moderated and like. Well, that's okay. Uh, yeah. You wanna? Yeah. <laughs> There's a whole other dark part. Yeah. I mean, we talk about the dark web. Yeah. But, um, just, I listened to another podcast. Maybe we don't have to talk about this. Mm -hmm. The dark web or what? It's, uh, it's really dark. Hmm. Um, and it has to do with, uh, end-to-end encryption. Mm Mm-hmm. And there's a whole, you know, debate about... Do people have absolute right to completely secure phones and data, like computer conversations? Mm -hmm. And the implications of that is like, you're okay with, you know, thinking that you deserve privacy because, like, then that means everyone else um, that uses uses it maliciously Mm -hmm. gets that Mm -hmm. and those communities are then can then flourish yeah but i mean but that's the whole thing right i mean it's our right i think it is our right in a way to have privacy through our data or control over our data but you know that same right also allows people like the dark web drug trafficking sex trafficking all those things to exist but those people are deciding to do something illegal, you know, and of course, yeah, law enforcement would love to have access to their communication, but they that's always been a cat and mouse game forever, right? Yeah, but the internet yeah, is like, yeah, like they can use these algorithms yeah, and get connected to those communities much easier. Yeah, I mean, and I, I mean... It's just kind of, you know, it, it's it's a hard thing, right? Like, yeah. I do think I we deserve the, the right to protect our data, but, like, you know, putting back doors and phones so the government can just listen in on everything, I mean, that's not the right answer either, right? I mean, yeah. but, you know, the dark web, there's been massive, massive takedowns of these drug communities and sex trafficking communities recently because the algorithms they're using, the Tor browser, all that, has been, they, it's been reverse engineered. So, you know, it's not private anymore. But if people keep using it, you know, I mean, that's how the FBI was able to stop the Silk Road. They actually reverse engineered the network. So mm-hmm. it's not encrypted anymore. They could figure out where all these nodes were and find where the people were. So, mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's drugs, like, selling things illegally bad, <laughs> sex trafficking bad. Yeah. But, that's you know, the, that's privacy, it's like, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of trust, right? Like, I always say in Google we trust, right? Because not every photo I take gets uploaded to Google Cloud. Uh-huh. I have to inherently trust that they're not going to share my private photos with someone. But, yeah, are, but, you know, what are they doing? I mean, there's a cost for everything. Yeah, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Google's using that for their own nefarious purposes. <laughs> like they're Potentially, not, it's potentially. It's not in their best interest to share... Yeah, your data because they use it. <laughs> yeah, I mean they're using it. They're scanning every image. They're using the you know whatever to figure out everything about me, right? Yeah. I mean that's the cost that I'm willing to pay to have awesome high resolution storage that I can access on any one of my devices anywhere in the world. That's pretty cool. But yeah, everything has a cost, and you have to be willing. I think when people complain, I'm like, well, if you don't want them to be able to do that, then don't have a phone. Don't have these. If you're wi- but you have to be willing to just I'm willing to give up some privacy or some you know some of m- me yeah. to have these features you know and I don't know I don't know if it's possible to 
live in modern society and give up phones now. I mean, certainly it's possible. There's plenty of people that can't afford a smartphone. But they have become so important for yeah like there's a statistic i saw that like 22 percent of college students uh rely solely on their phone for all That's network crazy. all homework everything That's they don't wild. have a computer all of their homework is done on their i mean at this phone. point it's getting there which is crazy to me yeah i mean when i was in 2009 when I graduated my first degree, that last semester, the first iPhone came out. Yeah. And I had my little texty flip phone. And I remember my, my, one of my cohorts got it, the iPhone. And we were just like, this is so far ahead. It, it, I mean, it could do things that like, it's like laughable now, but like just the web browser was so fast for its time. And you could pinch to zoom in on text and it like, self-oriented and you know like it was my it was mind-bending like compared to anything else at the time you know and i was like this is going to change everything and then i go back to school two years later for my second degree and everybody had smartphones we all had androids and iphones and it was like and i couldn't even think of doing school without it and yet i had done school without it forever but it was like you know it's just so crazy (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's wild, man. I miss those flip phones. I still have one somewhere in here. I should go back to it, Mike. Should do it. Unplug. No, I can't afford to do that. No way. Go to a flip phone? Yeah. I might have to delete all my social media again at some point. I, I would like to do that as well. At least I would like to pivot. I don't know. Yeah, it's getting pretty, it's getting pretty just, like, not fun. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I've gotten to the point now where I don't desire mm-hmm. to, like, share as much. Yeah, it I mean, used to be, like, everything. Nothing, yeah. like, things didn't happen unless you posted yeah, it, you yeah. know? Like, you I'm very, post. very picky about what I post, and I don't do it often. I, You know, I... I don't know. I mean, the snaps sometimes can be fun if you see something funny, but, like, I I don't really, like, see... I don't know where the end game is, because it's just just been, like, dumbed down to this, like, yeah. They're going to lose people if they don't figure out a better way to do it, but I don't know. Humans, yeah, humans are so, like, we want to be connected. We want to be, you know, I don't know. Yeah, these phones are pretty wild. Do you see the new Pixel came out? And it's actually, the specs are like worse than our phone. Yeah. But I mean, it's a cheaper phone. But it's interesting. Google's kind of backpedaling on doing like a performance phone. So I was like, well, I'm not going to upgrade. Like, nope. it has a little bit better battery than ours. But like, our chipset's way better. Our cameras are the same, except for one's a wide angle. But it's interesting. Yeah. I'm kind of glad because. I wasn't gonna buy it anyway, so yeah. I'm just glad to see that. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't enticing. Out. Yeah, I would have talked you out of it so fast. Sean, I'm gonna get the Pixel Five. I'm like, absolutely not. Have you looked at the specs? Yeah. <laughs> I told myself I'm keeping this for at least three years. Yeah, I always try to do at least two. That's kind of been my norm. Two. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see what it's like <laughs> year three. I'm sure it's gonna be pretty brutal so um i haven't had it for a know, year yeah a year yeah. almost i got it for black friday i think yeah the black friday deal which was awesome yeah i bought mine at, at launch like a sucker and, and i like paid I, way too much for it i haven't paid a phone <laughs> bill in a year that's so crazy <laughs> that's... google just hooked you up and you're on google fi right yeah dude google fi is amazing yeah, like, no. I, I don't understand. Well, I wonder what they're doing with all your voice data and stuff. That's true. <laughs> well, I also don't talk much on yeah. the phone. No. Like text data. But they would have had my text data anyway because I use their messenger app. So. Got you there, Google. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, I don't know, Mike. I, uh, that's all I've got for tonight. I don't know. Yeah. I think that was a good little chat. It was a nice little... We ranted about some social media, some uh, mm-hmm. video games. That kind of darked a little bit. Um, but, but hey, next week I'm getting Quest 2. Oh, yeah. We can talk about that. Um, oh, yeah. And then in two weeks, we're going to have Aaron Christensen and Dean. Um, oh, they were two guys that were also going to be at uh, Hack Fort this previous year, or this year. Um, but they're going to, I just, I was randomly thinking about Aaron because he had reached out to me. And, you know, Aaron and Dean both made some arcade cabinets in collaboration with, well, they made the game, and then they worked with Spacebar, who made the cabinet. Um, we'll probably still have them on for sure, uh, but I think it'll be just cool to talk about, to talk to those guys about making games and yeah, collaborating on making a cabinet, and just, um, they're both kind of freelance developers here in Boise now, and um, nice game, guys. Is the game in Spacebar now? It is. I played it. Didn't yeah. you when I played it? I didn't play it, no. Oh, uh, I thought I played it with you. Oh. It's a pretty... Well, I played one of them. I know they have, like, two games in there now. I don't know if Aaron and Dean, but the, I know the one they made. I played, and it's a multiplayer game um, where two people drop, and there's, like, a sword, and you have to fight over the sword because the person with it can stab the other guy. Mm. But the other guy can block, and you can, like, hit the sword, and there's, like, things that'll make the sword fall out of their hand. Well, this sounds pretty um, awesome. It's kind of like... Ca- uh, not Is it Castle Crashers? No, uh... What's uh what's the the game with the arrows in the castle? Towerfall. Towerfall. It kind of reminded me of Towerfall, but it's a three dimensional like arena. Oh. But yeah, you're both kind of fighting over a yeah, and it was you know it's pretty sweet. It's simple. Sweet. Yeah, we should go to Space Bar anyway since they had a dusty and. Yeah. They have tokens at Space Bar now. Their own tokens if you put in a a, a dollar in the machine. Like all the machines will still take quarters, but if you use their machine, it gives you their coin. Oh. Which is kind of smart, right? Because you have to spend them at the, at the bar. <laughs> Genius. Yeah, but they're cool. They're little space bar coins. Hmm. Yeah, I haven't been there since February. Yeah, it's been a bit. I mean, you have to wear a mask at all times in there, and Dusty's been getting pretty tired of policing that. Oh, yeah, of course. So, hey, I get it. <laughs> yeah. Well, cool. Well, thanks everyone, and uh, till next time. You know we've been doing these since June. Wow, we've been doing them. Isn't that crazy? I like the the cadence has been good. We might pick it up too when it comes closer to Hack Fort. Who knows? Yeah, definitely probably gonna take a holiday break. I'm demanding it. I would like to clip all these up and put them all as Joe Rogan style on. YouTube. Just tons of clips from us ranting yeah. about stuff. <laughs> yeah. What Sean thinks about the dark web. And another thing. <laughs> Alright.